Good morning. Praise be to the name of the Father. I'm so glad you all came out this morning. I'm so glad you all invited people out. Even some of y'all who didn't invite nobody out. <laughs> and I know you're going to, God's going to get your heart one day. Had a gentleman call me this morning. Said, Pastor, you know, I, I, I'm coming, I'm coming, but I, I can't come today. Just don't, just don't have the resources just yet. He, he, he lives a good distance from here and he's an older gentleman. Man, I appreciate that. He said, I just don't want to not show up. Just want to give you the common courtesy. I said, well, thank you. I do appreciate that. You know, because you know, he, everybody go through challenges. Everybody go through challenges. Financial, you know, mental challenges, verbal abuse challenges. <clears throat> everybody has those challenges. Cool thing about it is this: this is one thing. It's called communication. Called communication. And I guess I've learned that one over the past. 20 plus years now with my wife. If you don't communicate, you know, that's when things begin to go south. <laughs> and, and we don't want things to go south. Anyway, praise God. Maybe maybe somebody needed that. Maybe somebody didn't. I'm just throwing it out there. Let's go with Father Father. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your love, your goodness, your compassion, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for all that you have supplied us in your word, Father God, up to this point. We believe you, Father God, because you said in your word, all things are possible to them that believe. And we believe you, Lord Jesus. Continue to show us in your word how to impact our belief with you, Father God. Help our belief in you, Father God, have no boundaries. Help our belief, Father God, in you, Father God, and have no <coughs> obstacles, but just straightforward belief in you. We thank you, Father God. We love you and we appreciate you for giving us this great thing called your word. We love you, Father God, and we appreciate you for that. Now, Father God, as we take this new adventure into your word, we believe that you are unlocking these hidden truths in your word so that we can grasp hold to them and we can incorporate them into our lives so that we can receive the promises that you have <clears throat> predestined before the foundation of the world. Now, Father God, I submit myself to your spirit, soul, and body. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouthpiece to minister your word to your people this day. And we covenant with you right now, Father God, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of today's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Belief with no boundaries. I know that came straight from the Spirit of God in my prayer. I wasn't even thinking about that. And that just kind of like called me, called me up God right in prayer. Think about that. You're going into God's Word and you can believe God. And no kind of boundaries or no obstacles to keep you from believing. Man, well, well let, let me let me show y'all. Let me show y'all that. Let me show y'all that principle. And it is, it's it's kind of cool. Go to Genesis. I don't know why that's jumping in my head. The Spirit of God changing my whole teaching. I mean, I just want to show it to you. Hopefully, it don't take too long. <laughs> but uh, go to Genesis. Go to Genesis chapter. This this is old Bessie. Bessie kind of like falling apart here. Uh, Genesis chapter. attention, Holy Spirit. I wasn't even thinking about that. Where's that with the top? Uh, this chapter 10. The Tower of Babel. Who remembers it? The Genesis chapter 10 or Genesis chapter 11? Yeah, Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 10. Go to Genesis chapter 10. Go to Genesis chapter 10. That's good stuff right there, Holy Spirit. He dropped it right in my head. 
It's been a minute since I've actually been over there. Genesis chapter 10. Look at uh, 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 no, it ain't 10, it's 11. <laughs> it's 11. Look what it says in verse 1. It says, and the whole earth was, was of one language and of one speech. One language and one speech. Think about it. If you got everybody around you on one accord who, 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 who talking the same, not the personalities, because everybody got different personalities, but everybody got the same vision. Oh, man, that's, that's good. Everybody got the same vision. Look what it says. Now, we know these guys right here. They were finna go and build this tower, and it was gonna reach all the way to heaven. <laughs> gonna reach all the way to heaven. That's, that's what verse 4 says. It says verse 4. And they said, Go to and let us build us a, a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, <laughs> unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Verse 5 says, And the Lord came down to see to the city and the tower which the children of men build. And the Lord said, oh my goodness, behold, the people is one. Notice it says, the people is one. Is the word is in your Bible in the Tanisites? That means it wasn't there in the original Hebrew text. It says that, that you can just almost just leave it out. The people won. The people won. And they have all one language, and this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Now we know this was in a wicked sense. But think about that. Everybody on the same page. Everybody having one mindset, one vision to accomplish a certain goal. I don't know about y'all, but that's, that's speaking volumes to me. I mean, volumes to me. Because think about it. Even in different organizations, on my job, just you know, I'm using on my job, I try to tell everybody, when I'm, when I'm bringing people in, I, and I'm not going to say the name of the company, but I said, what's the name on the front of the building? And they'll say so, 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 so. And I say, okay, remember that. You can use your experiences. You can le lean back. If, I, if I'm hiring you on a job or whatever, or uh, you, and when, you, um, when you've been on a job for a while, you can rely on your experiences, but at the end of the day, it says so-and-so on the front of the building. It don't have your name there. So you can lean on your experiences if you want to and choose to, which would be good because we want you to. But as long as it meet that, individual standard, we fine. That means everybody gonna have something unique. Oh goodness gracious, I'm, I'm pretty reading this more myself. Get it. Everybody gonna have something unique because they everybody gonna bring something different to the table. Everybody gonna bring something different to the table. But as long as it meets that standard, what's the vision of New Life Christian Center? Learn how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. Now, we have been given a commission to go out and teach people how to do this, which will constitute you have to learn how to do it yourself before you can teach somebody else. Right? And God said, what did God say right here? They are one, one language, and everything that they've imagined to do Nothing will be restrained. There's no obstacles. Oh, glory to God, man. No obstacles. And they said, we're going to get this thing done. No obstacles, complete belief. And God says that is gonna, they're going to get it done. The only way that they did not get it done, because in verse 7 it says, go to, let us go down. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. Mm -hmm. They had complete 
communication with each other to achieve a specific vision. And the only reason why it did not get accomplished is because God had uh, distributed the languages around the earth. This is when the language came in. No, I think about it. I'm just going to use it. Let's say like everybody was speaking English at one time. Everybody understood each other. And one leader came together and got everybody together. And we, it's okay if you don't know. If you go back and read in Genesis chapter 10, you'll find out that this one king was Nimrod. He was a black man. And, and he, 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 he got everybody together to, to build this one big tower and it's going to stretch out and he got everybody to get involved in his vision that God that he believed that God gave him but then ended up becoming wicked <laughs> Woo! and God said okay no more of this now it's not y'all 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 messing it all up English Spanish Greek Italian uh Whatever other kind of language you can speak of, God had made sure all, all that's when all the languages came. And nobody really, really understood each other. And the ones who did understand each other, they went their way. And the others who did understand each other, they went their way. Oh my goodness, okay. Well, I just wanted to show y'all that. Uh, the Spirit of God just dropped that in my head. So it's, it's pretty good stuff right there. That's pretty good stuff right there. One vision, man. One vision. One vision. Not five. One. Not five, one. Not five visions, one vision. With that being said, turn your Bibles <laughs> all the way over to the book of Romans. The book of Romans. <clears throat> Chapter 12, we have been talking about, we have been talking about uh, spiritual gifts. We are in a subheading the, of the uh, the actual vision. I mean, the actual uh, uh, message for the whole entire year. What's the message for the whole entire year so far? Well, what have we been talking about? Manifestation of what we've been believing for manifestation of what we've been believing for. That's the, that's the main topic that God gave us. Some of you all were not here. At the end of last year, right going into, you know, New Year's when the, when the message came forth and that, but if you go back, it's uploaded, you can go back and look at that message and listen to it and, and grab hold to it. You know, it's a New Year celebration. When God opens up and says, this is what, this is the direction we need you, I need you to go in. When God gave that to me, I was like, Lord, yeah, it's about time. I'm, 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 ain't y'all ready to see things start happening? Yeah. I mean, I am. I have been believing, you know, what does the Bible say in the book of Proverbs? It says, Her, hope, her, <laughs> hope deferred maketh the heart sick. You've been believing and hoping for something so long, and all of a sudden it doesn't manifest. What does it do? It can make you sick and cause you to be frustrated, aggravated, disappointed. And so, for some people who don't know how to chalk things up and then just move on, it can actually make you physically sick. It can cause you to be depressed. You've been hoping for something, hoping for something, hoping for something, hoping for something, and all of a sudden it don't happen before you know it. You end up in the bathroom throwing up. So, with that being said, with that being said, here we go. Romans chapter 12, we are up on this subtopic of the main topic, spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Everybody has a spiritual gifts. Everybody has spiritual gifts. I'm going to go down real quickly, real quickly, about these spiritual gifts. In the book of Romans chapter 12, these spiritual gifts are yours. The day you're born into the earth, you basically have these. These are your gifts. I've said this, I don't know how many times already, but I'm, I don't know why I'm, I'm reiterating it, only because I, I just it's, I just sense here that everybody hasn't got it. So I'm going to just keep reiterating. 
These gifts right here are your gifts. These are the ones that you are born into the earth with. In uh, Romans, uh, no, 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 Romans, in Ephesians chapter 4, where we have the fivefold ministry gifts, what are those? Apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. Those gifts, they come directly from Jesus himself. Directly from Jesus himself. Those gifts are here to unify the body of Christ and to educate people in the body. Remember how we talked about we were all once in the world dead and trespassed and sins worry. When when God when you believe somebody ministered the gospel to you while you was in the world, God snatched you out of the world and he placed you in the body of Christ, spiritually speaking. But what he did not snatch, I wish he would have just helped kick it right on now, was your mindset, all of the dumb stuff that you had learned and all of the incorrect stuff that you had learned that went contrary to God's word. So now, God given the apostle, the pastor, the prophet, evangelist, teacher to teach you and help you mature to go through that deletion process of all the stuff that you was in before you came into the body of Christ. So that we can dwell together in unity up under this one heading called what? Christ. All right, don't y'all remember this? I know I've taught it, okay? That's why, that's why I said you need to go back and look at listen to these teachings. But then when you get over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, these are manifestations of the Holy Spirit himself. And the Holy Spirit himself, he has the choice at any given time throughout a person's walk to be able to manifest himself through that person as he wills it. The gifts of Romans chapter 12 is as you will. Like me, I don't need a movement of the Holy Spirit to start teaching the Bible. It's just my gift. And it's, it's, I, I, I love doing it. I really, really love educating people. Even when it comes to just basic teaching. Basic teaching. Like when you're on a job and you're a rookie on the job. Now, like football season about to start, you got when you watch the preseason football, you got all these rookies, you know, um, people, free agents coming in on a uh, team. They trying to make a team. They trying to make a team. So what are they doing? They doing everything that they can to show that they belong on this team. Now you got the coaches sitting up looking at the rookie and saying, no, 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 rook, don't do that. Do it this way. Teaching them. I love doing it, coaching somebody so that they can get to the next level. Coach, 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 coach them up. And that's what the fivefold ministry is doing, to edify the body of Christ. Sad thing about it is, it's a bunch of folk, I don't need to go to church. I, I can get the word on my own. And then you look at their life and you're like, okay, well, keep on getting the word on your own. You, I mean, and, well, I don't really think that there are prophets nowadays. Well, you you got to rip Ephesians chapter 4 out of the Bible. I don't think there are very, very many apostles nowadays. You got to rip first, you got to rip the Ephesians chapter 4 out of the Bible. Because God said, Jesus said, I give and need five ministry gifts to edify the body of Christ. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Remember, those are gifts of who? The Holy Spirit. That's how the Holy Spirit will manifest himself in a believer. That's why I knew he said, so I'm going back and reiterating it. The Holy Spirit will manifest himself through a believer. The Holy Spirit, he, he still, even if you're not a believer, if you are a king, or you are, if, you, if you're a king, which means you are a, a leader, a leader in, in, on a job, because it's, it's a whole bunch of leaders now. Or if you're in the government and, you, and you're in a high prominent position, you might not even be born again. If the Holy Spirit needs something done, he can come up on you to get a specific job done. 
I mean, you willing later to go ahead and try to get Jesus crucified. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, no, the Bible says, he said that uh, it is that one man should die, then that many should perish. One man. He was referring to Jesus. And the Bible says the only reason why he said this is because he was high priest that year. High priest, which means the Holy, if you go back and look at the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit, kings, prophets, and priests, the Holy Spirit, even if they were wicked kings, it's like Nebuchadnezzar was a wicked king. The Holy Spirit came on Nebuchadnezzar to get a certain job done. So, uh, personally, me, I would rather be in the will of God and getting things done, helping God and, and being on his side, than in the will of God, because never, because even though Caiaphas, he, he's in hell, I believe so, unless he repented, the Bible really don't tell us. Maybe he got born again later on in life. I don't really know. Before he died, I don't know. The Bible doesn't really say it. But if he didn't, you know, if he did get born again, I know that Job was in hell. And you can you can be in the will of God and uh, going against Jesus and the Spirit of God and use you to get a certain job done just because you're in a prominent position. You're a king in such an area. And all of a sudden, you find yourself in hell. Like, but the Holy God used me. He sure did. Because you resisted Jesus. Well, you know, that's a whole nother story. Whole nother story. So, now here we go. We got these gifts. We got these gifts. And it is up to us. Back in Romans chapter 12. It is up to us to know how to do what? Use our gifts being compatible with others. I'm going to say it again. To use your gift to be compatible with others. So right now, what we're talking about right now is can we all just get along? I mean, literally. literally I mean, that, that's, that's almost like where we're at right now. Some of us, we don't. He disrespected me! Like, what the world are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? How, how, did, how, did, she, how did she disrespect you? Well, she, she, she said, she said that I need to get a job. Well, do you have a job? Well, no. How she disrespect you then? You need to get a job. Okay, husband and wife, rewind, let's go back. Man, woman, get married. Dude, you don't never want to do nothing but lay your big feet up on the table and drink beer and watch football. Why you think your wife is holy. Cut the grass. Some of y'all men actually think that. Well, just cut she both cut the grass, go to work, and then wash all your drawers and hers too, and the two big ass kids you got. And then she gotta cook dinner, and then you wanna jump on at the end of the night. And she tired as all the way. You know what I mean by jump on. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then and I and then you guys say, well I go to work. Well, you think she ain't worked all day long too? Here you go, you got a gift, she got a gift, and you expect her to do all the work? I love the series about, and I've been watching the Hidden, Hidden and Missing It. I love the series what uh, Taffy Dollar's doing about uh, gender roles, unity. I mean, and it's kind of, it's really, really enlightening, showing, going back, showing me some stuff <coughs> about, the, about the aspects between a husband and a wife and how they're supposed to come together. Well, think about it. It's the same way it is on the job. It's the same way it is on the job. It's the same way it is when you out in, in the public place. Think about it. You can get mad at this person in front of you, but if you don't slow or slow your roll, you'll be mad at this person for the wrong reasons, and it ain't even a fault. <laughs> Especially like when you call you call the telephone company. Oh, but let's say we have me and my wife. We had some child with our telephone company for a minute, and we kept calling the people. Kept calling them, you know, to correct our bill. They kept saying we owe more money than what we really, really owe. And we called one of this person over here, and he on the front line. And then we called this person over here, and they on the front line. And 
They don't make the final decision. It's somebody up above, and all of a sudden there's no communication going between them. And guess what? Me and my wife still ended up paying the dog of money. And then in my head, like, well, don't y'all communicate with each other? No communication. No, nobody's talking to each other. But yet at the end of the day, we had to end up paying more money. Why is that? Because nobody's being compatible with each other. Nobody's communicating. Communication is always going to be a great thing to keep people compatible with each other. How do I know that? Look what it says in Romans chapter 12. We've read it a couple of times, a thousand times, but here it is. We got different aspects of it. Verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing. We all in this one body or let's just, let's just take the earth as a, as a whole. Here we are, we all in this one earth. And black folk can't get along with the white folk. You call a Hispanic, or let's say you call somebody who's Mexican, you accidentally call them Puerto Rican. Oh, no, they ready to fight. Yeah. I ain't no, I ain't no, oh, no, I ain't a Puerto Rican. I am Mexican. Or, or somebody Cuban, if you call a Cuban person uh, uh, a Mexican. I'm, no, I'm Cuban. I'm not Mexican. They, they get real, real upset, real, real upset. Uh, I, heard, I heard a song, and it was by accident. I kind of like went and listened to it again. I heard I heard a song, and it's um, Jay-Z created. It's one of his new songs in the song, and it's called uh, N-I-G-G-E-R. And he said, black, black, mm, uh, Light mm, and uh, mix mm, still mm, still n n n okay okay yeah yeah I know where I'm going there. Yeah. After my said, interesting and we think about because I've seen some caramel color black folk. I seen some black black folks such as I'm a, I mean I'm a dog brother, but I also got this other brother over here. He might be he might be black as tar, black. Have y'all ever seen one of them black real real black brother that look mm -hmm. blue? <laughs> And like, dude, you brother, he's still a brother. He's he, he in the body of Christ. I need to know how to get along with him. Think about that. All of us, no matter where you go, here you are, you born again, who you are. Right now in the earth, you might be a racist bigot. I've talked about that last time. You a racist bigot. You born again. This, your, your racism, your bigotry, that sin, Jesus paid for it. He's already forgiven you. And now here you are believing you're going to go to heaven when you die. Because you will. Because you've accepted Jesus Christ your Lord. Am I correct? Right. So you die and you go to heaven. I die, let's say two years later, and I go to heaven. Oh, how you doing, brother? I was walking in grace. You wasn't. You're going to be like, well, I'm going to go over here to this other side of the heaven. It's going to be all white people over here. <laughs> no, it ain't. You're going to run across the whole lot of them over there on the other side of heaven. And it ain't, ain't going to be no difference. Why? Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. 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 I want you to remember. Everybody has a different gift. So, uh, here we go. Now, I, I want y'all to see this. Having then gifts differing, having then gifts differing, it says, whether the whether prophecy, then we talked about prophecy already. Yeah, we did. We are talking about prophecy. Let's drop all the way down. It says, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. It says, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or then we, oh, where did we leave off at? Oh, we got all the way down to verse 9. Then. I see it. I see it. I, I see it. I see it. They go right there. Let us be, verse number 9. Let love be without dissimulation. All of that which is evil cleave to that which is good. Now let's deal with that. Let's deal with that. Let love. This word love, it is agape. Again, as my sister was saying. <laughs> the pronunciation of it is 
A G R A G R A G A H Pay P A Y Pay Agape. It is love that is affection or uh, benevolence, specifically in the plural form. Specifically in the plural form, or a love fest, charity. We know it as what? The God kind of love. It's a love fest. God showed how much his love was for us when he gave us Jesus as a sacrifice for every man's sin. What did Jesus say over there in the book, in the book of uh, Luke? When he when they was, came into the temple and here they deal on a Sabbath day, and then Jesus saw somebody who was who who who, who needed to get up and walk. And then all of a sudden, the, the scribes, the Pharisees, they sat back and they were like, Well, we're gonna watch and see what he's gonna do. And all of Jesus, Jesus saw, he Bible said he knew what was going on in their heart, and he said, Well, which one is easier to say? Is it easier to say, Take thy bed up and walk, or thy sins be forgiven? Which one? They wanted to see what Jesus was going to do on his Sabbath day. Because they wanted to accuse him of breaking the Sabbath. Even though hitting somebody on the Sabbath. Because if you look back up in a few uh, uh, another chapter, you'll see what Jesus, every time Jesus healed somebody, it was almost like he healed somebody on the Sabbath day. Because he wanted to let them know, he's like, this person on the Sabbath, he said, don't you lose your ox or your, your, your horse on a Sabbath day so that they can go graze into the field. Should not I lose this man? Should not I lose this woman who is a daughter of Abraham? Be free. That's the God that he made his love as a feast. It's like, and some of us still ain't figured out this big feast. Look what he said. He said, he said, he said it's, uh, let love be without dissimulation. The word dissimulation here, it is, I'm not going to even try to pronounce it. You can write it down and pronounce it how you want it is A N U P O K R I T O S. A N U P O K R I T O S. It is a it, it is as a negative particle and a presumed derivative, undis, undissembled, that is sincere. That is sincere. Without hypocrisy, unveiled. Unveiled. Without hypocrisy, unveiled. So when he's saying, let us love that is unveiled, that has no boundaries to it. Come on now, y'all need to catch that. No boundaries to it. No obstacles to it. Nothing in the way. Nothing in the way. You're doing everything you can to go all out for this individual. I'm going to say that again. You're doing everything you can to go all out for this individual. See, most people don't want to love on this kind of level with others because you're freaking selfish. Yes, I came real strong right there. you just selfish. You think about you all the time. What about me? What about me? What about me? It's me. I. You got gifts and talents that people need, and here you are selfish. You selfish. Flat out selfish. Now I'm coming back. I'm going to stop being so mean. It says, let love be without dissimulation. Without any kind of obstacles. I'm going to say it again. Any kind of obstacles, nothing that's going to have any kind of hypocrisy. If you don't know what hypocrisy is, it is something that you're doing. You're going to do this, but it's going to do everything you can to benefit you back. I'm going to give you an example. Go to the book of uh, Matthew.
Yeah, Matthew chapter 5. I know. Right. Matthew 5. Y'all there yet? see how he's teaching on this love without dissimulation. Love, love that has no obstacles or boundaries to it. Verse 18. Y'all there? Watch what it says. It says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Now, He's talking about, and not, if you go back under the Levitical law, even the Ten Commandments, like 600 or some odd commandments. All the different ad libs and all the different admins that that was added on to the Ten Commandments. But we talked about the Ten Commandments earlier this year. You know, the Ten Commandments, and then each one of those commandments, they had some. Of, they had what we call, with our Constitution is set up like that. It's one law, and then you have a bunch of admins added on, amendments added on to it, so that you won't break the original commandment. Jesus, he obeyed all of them. And under the old covenant, it was required that men obeyed all of them, but nobody could do it. That's why he said right here, not one jot or even one tittle of that law shall pass away till it be fulfilled. Now thanks be to God, Jesus fulfilled every last commandment. He did, that's why we can say he did not commit not one sin. Because he didn't break no commandments at all. None. So when you get to verse 19, it says, Who shall ever shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. That's some good stuff right there. Jesus, he, notice how Jesus is still putting it back on people. Because that's what he was. He was about the old covenant. He put everything back on people. He had to. He let everybody know not one job is going to be, uh, everything got to be fulfilled. But he was the fulfiller of it. It hadn't been fulfilled yet because he hadn't died on the cross yet. He hadn't died on the cross yet. But he says, but if you, te if you teach, if you obey the word and you teach the word, you'll be called great. If you don't teach, if you teach the word and you don't even do the word, you'll be called least. But look how he says in verse 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. He will put the, 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 the scribes and the Pharisees, they were the preachers of that day. And they were teaching men to do stuff, teaching people to do stuff, and they were teaching them, but at the end of the day, they weren't doing it themselves. How many of us had parents like that? Do what I say, not as I do. Don't smoke that cigarette. Don't drink the alcohol. Go, go, go. And don't, don't get have sex to you. No, you need to find you somebody who loves you before you have sex. But then now you got Billy Joe Johnny coming in the front door, and you got James coming in the back door. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Look what he says in verse 21. Ye have heard that it was said... Of, the, of them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Notice how Jesus saying that. He's saying, hey, you have heard, haven't y'all heard that before? What's, what's danger of the judgment? If you kill somebody, you're going to go to jail. <clears throat> Verse 22 says, But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, shall be in danger of the judgment. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Angry with your brother without a cause. Now, that leaves a whole lot of room now. Because how many of us, <clears throat> excuse me, we hold grudges against our family members? Yeah. Okay, see, sure. I want y'all to think about we making this transition. We still in Romans chapter 12. Jesus was teaching Romans chapter 12 at this time. Y'all need to get along with each other. You got you to you figure it out. I've given you my word on how to walk in love with each other. I'm telling you, you need to love. You got 
got a gift. See, I, since I've learned how to be able to see people's gifts. Now, some people that just straight up belligerent and, oh, uh, 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 fine. I ain't got to talk to you because I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just not. Go home. I've had you that on my job a couple of times. Just, just go home then. See you later. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I love you, but that's the way the road you want to go down. Go for it. Just leave. Now you got these, Jesus over here. He said, if you anger with your brother without a cause, you'll be guilty of in danger of the judgment. Am I right? Right? But look what he says. And whosoever shall say to him, and whosoever shall say to his brother, what? Raka, R-A-C-A, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Now I'm going to read this word, read this word over here, Raka, to you. And, 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 it's, and it's kind of it's kind of cool when you first catch hold to it. When you first catch hold to it. You think in your head like, okay, Jesus, I ain't never saw no stuff like this. I ain't never even knew this was in the Bible. Well, it's been in the Bible the whole time just because you ain't know what's in there. The word raw, oh, goodness gracious, words are jumping all over the place. <laughs> the word raka, it is R-H-A-K-A. -A. It is a Chaldean origin word. Or it is a pagan word. It is empty one that is thou worthless as a term of utter, uh, uh, utter filication. Okay. If you say to your brother Raka, that means you useless, you empty, and you have nothing to do with nothing. Think about telling somebody that. that's why a lot of people think right, right, right. that's why people commit suicide. That's why people on depress antidepressant medicines and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Why? Because they feel empty and useless. Think about it. if you got a man and a woman in a relationship and all of a sudden it's, it's an abusive one and a man is constantly, look what you made me do. <laughs> no, I I can tell you. <laughs> Eat the cake out of me. Man, beat her down and call her. No, you don't do what I tell you to do, because you ain't worth nothing without me. That's what people are in now. What did Jesus say about that kind of person? Read it. He said, Raka shall be in danger of the council. I mean, that's the judgment, right? He said, that's, that's standing right there, the council, the judgment. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Why would Jesus go down to this extreme about Hanging out, dealing with people. Why, did, why would he go down to this extreme by dealing with people? Because he know can, things can't get done without people. And he know when you come into the body of Christ, you can't have this attitude over in the body of Christ. You got to know how to work with this person next to you. You have to know how to work with this person next to you. You have to figure it out. You have to figure it out. God has given us his word to be able to figure it out. What did he say over there in the book of Colossians? He said, set our affection on things that are above. Yeah, love without it. He said, love, love be, be affectionate, brotherly kind, one to another. Let's, let, let the other person esteem the other person higher than themselves. Why is Jesus? He said, no, I want y'all really look at the verse. He said, shall be in danger of the council. I don't want to be standing before God and judging how I treated or mistreated somebody, my one person, a person in the earth. I don't want Lord. I come here. <laughs> yes, sir. Aaron, why did you treat your wife like she got some, like you got some sense? You you know my word. You know my word. <laughs> I'm, I'm standing there in fear. I don't want to be counseled like that. But then he say, if I call somebody a fool, I'm in danger of hell fire. I'm in danger of going to hell. Why? Because God has given every last one of us gifts and talents, and we should be learning how to use them to benefit one another. It's been here the whole time. And we've been blowing it off. And God is saying, what do you say? Go back over to Romans. Go back over to Romans. Go back over to Romans. I'm about to close it up here. 
What did he say? Romans chapter 12, what did he say? Verse 9. Spent half an hour on, on verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. We couldn't even get to the second half of the verse. He says, arbor that which is evil. I'm telling you, not figuring out how to get along with each other, that's evil. That's evil. I mentioned the other day, remember what I said the other day, uh, God, what God spoke to us the other day, is that sin will show up all ugly old kind of ways. And people not getting along, God see that as evil. That's evil. You, how you, what do you mean you can't get along with them? Didn't I give you my word? Didn't Jesus pay the price for all of kind of sin? All sin. If he paid the price for it, how can we live any longer therein? Not getting along with each other. Well, I don't like what she said to me. Oh, my goodness. Okay, you, you getting offended. Why, why, why are you offended? Well, she said that she she said and, and she, she don't want to do this. Get away from me. <laughs> That's what you want to say to them. Figure it out, man. Figure it out. Everybody can't be like you, Ivory. Get it about me. It's, if you read this word and if you apply this word to your life, it'll become real easy for you to get along with folks. Did y'all, how many of y'all, by a show of hands, knew that these scriptures in the Bible? One person in this whole room. What about any of y'all out there? Raise your hand. Put it on the screen. No, see, nobody. It's been in the Bible the whole time. Let's, let, me, let me close it up here. Let me close it up here, verse 9. It says, Arbor that which is arbor, that which arbor, the word arbor means shun. Get away from it. That which is evil and cleave to that which is good. So what is the good in this instance right here? Getting along. Figure out how to get along with each other. Figure out how to get along with each other. Every, all of you all, listen to me careful people, all of you all have gifts and talents that people need. And the only reason why you ain't showing them because you're selfish. You flat out selfish, and only God can help you deliver you from that. I shouldn't have worked so doggone hard that people would not have known, and they taken advantage of me. You're supposed to work hard anyway. I mean, yeah, I mean, we talk about an integrity issue now. Do you have integrity? Why well, do when they hush? You the way you talking about it, fuck. Nobody taking them. How you, only, people, only time people can take advantage of you if you allow them to. And most of the time it's a mental state. It has nothing to do with physicality. Glory to God. Pray, I, I, I can't count strongly, y'all, but we, we, we need this because it's time, man. It's time. These are gifts and talents. Hey, hey, we'll be right back. <laughs>